Hey, and welcome to another video where, first things first, quick thank you to everyone who voted on Instagram for the poll of the thumbnail. I was really in between whether to have a diagonal or vertical before and after of the edit. Today's video is just about a basic rundown of all of the uh, basic settings and things to keep in mind when shooting both in normal light and low light especially. Today's focus will be more about the f-stops as opposed to everything else. However, I will be giving an in-depth explanation on all of these topics in future video. The key to any photography is the amount of light that hits the sensor. Low light just means that you need more light to hit the sensor and all of the settings involved with that will be described in today's video. So, the key to low light is, ironically, light which means you need as much data in your file as possible. So tip number one is you must always shoot in raw format if you can. JPEG is just a very compressed file, which means all of the data that your sensor can actually capture is gone. Raw is better explained with this analogy. If I give you a cake, you have the, you just have the cake already made. Uh, if you don't like it, maybe you can add some more icing or frosting on top. Think of that icing or frosting as an Instagram filter. You can only add something to the very top layer, but you can't actually change the cake itself. Now with raw, if I give you the ingredients for the cake, and let's say it's a carrot cake and you don't like carrots, you can take those out. So it's more of the building block. If you don't like, you can change the recipe. Second tip is think about your subject. What do you want to take a photo of? What do you want to be in focus? For today's photo, uh, it wanted to be a, I wanted it to have a very shallow depth of field. So before we go any further, we need to discuss what are f-stops. So f-stops is just how open your lens is. So we take this lens, which is the Nikon 24-70. to So this is what the camera sensor sees. So all the light comes through here, bounces around through all of the layers of glass uh, and then at the back here is the aperture and the aperture is through there you can see at the moment it's if we look through here it's around f22 which is actually a tiny pinhole so not very much light is getting through but this also means the most is in focus uh, f22 is everything is in focus if we slowly move this up you can see the camera of the aperture opening inside. This is f2.8. So the blades inside the lens are all the way open, which means the most amount of light is coming through. That's how you can see me through here. So with f2.8, we have the most amount of light, but a very shallow depth of field, which means only very thin amount is actually in focus, and vice versa the other way. So if we take a look at the settings that I had in the photo in question. Uh, I used, like I said, the Nikon 24-70 lens, 2.8, at 70 millimeters, so it was all the way extended. We used 1 one hundredth of a second to freeze any motion that would happen in the subject's hand, maybe they were shaking. 1 one hundredth of a second will freeze all of the motion, but then also not let in that much light because the shutter is open and closed for so well, one one hundredth of a second. So to compensate with this, uh, we bumped up the ISO, which is the sensitivity of the sensor behind the lens to the light. So we can go in this camera, for example, we can go from 50 all the way up to 25,000. Uh, however, you have the least amount of noise, which is uh, just like colorful artifacts, like uh, if you have a black image and then you have weird purple pixels, that's noise. So I used ISO 250, which isn't particularly high, but we have to also remember I'm taking a photo of a light source, so it's emitting the light itself. As well, we also had a ring light, which is also the light that's lighting behind here, and an iPad also lit lighting the underneath the hands of the subject. That's what gives us this nice cool blue tint. So because we have so many light sources, we didn't actually have to bump it up that far. Uh, and as well, shooting in RAW, we uh, have much more control of the photo without that much, without much noise. So let me just turn on my screen recorder here. So 
when you turn on the screen recorder on my laptop, then we can go through the edits together. So opening up into Lightroom here, we can see the original photo and the photo in the thumbnail. Uh, and then what we'll do is go through all of the settings and what they change and why they would change to these values. So if we go back to the original, we can see that this is the photo that came out of the camera. Quite underexposed and uh, not much going on. Uh, lots of black and not much real punch to it. Whereas in this photo, we can see all of the edits that I made. So, starting off with exposure. Exposure is the amount that we see in the photo. If we crank it all the way up, we can see more. However, if we go over here, all of these grains, all of these grains here are the noise that I was talking about earlier. So we don't want to push that too high. Uh, otherwise it will end up looking like this and especially if you print this will show up so we'll bring that back down and we can see as we bring it down the noise noise gets less and less uh, obvious and then obviously when we zoom out it's even better uh, contrast is the difference between the black and the white and how much distance there is so we haven't actually moved it up too much, only plus 26. Uh, we can see if we pull it down, the image becomes a lot more flat. Uh, however, most, uh, well, my style of photography, I like to have more punchy photos. So I don't want to do it too much because then the difference is too, too exaggerated, let's say. So I just keep that down at anywhere around here. Highlights is the highest point. So we can see in the histogram up here, and this histogram is basically uh, a data analysis of your photo, uh, split into sections. So here are your blacks, shadows, exposure in the middle, highlights, whites, and so on. So we can see if we, the highlights are the highest white points in your photo. So all of the white points like the center of the bulbs, if we bring that down, we can then see more of the bulbs inside. Maybe it'll be easier if we zoom in. There we go. So you can see here is the LED inside of the bulb. If we bring that down, we can actually see the LED is right here. And it gives us a lot more clarity and uh, take, basically takes up the glare. In the, in the photo. How would we bring it back up and over? Then it, we can't see anything in there. But then we also see on the histogram in the top right, can you see how it goes up and then down to flat? Now this, these are all uh, personal preference. I think that looks nice. Uh, so you can see just more of a glow inside her hands. Shadows is basically the opposite to highlights, which is all of the darkest points. So we can see all around the edges, and in the histogram, if we go up, it broadens the curve. And if we bring it down, uh, it puts more emphasis towards the center where all of the light is. And all the way down. Also a nice effect, uh, again, due to personal preference but I like to keep it a bit mysterious to see like a, a silhouette of a body behind so you don't really know what's going on because you, you always you don't want your photo just to be a snap like on your phone you want your photo to kind of begin to tell a story of what's going on why is it like that and and give a give a general mood uh, give a general mood or feeling to your photo you don't just want it to be like a click snapshot moment in time otherwise you would have just picked up your phone and not the DSLR white uh, moving on to whites whites is just all of the white in the photo if we push that up then it becomes kind of overexposed but only on the brightest points of the photo not like exposure it brings up everything uh, and then most of these tools act like that. So with blacks, I found that there's already enough black, so I didn't actually touch that. 
and then moving down to color temperature. This is where this is also known as the white balance on your camera. Uh, if we go to the cooler side, which is the blue side, you get more of a cool, a cool photo, uh, which is more blue. Uh, or if we go to the warmer side, you get more of a warm photo. So in this one, I brought it started off here at 4500, which is the uh, if we go to as shot. This is what came out of the camera here. So this is 4500 as you can see in the temperature. However, uh, I brought that down to cool down the photo to accentuate the blue light coming from the iPad and from the ring light as well. So that gives us a cooler contrast around where all of the white light is coming from and a nice contrast between the warm light in our hands and the cool light outside which is what makes this uh, photo so eye-catching and focuses your eyes right to the center because we have the shallow depth of field i.e. the front of her fingers and the back of our hand is out of focus but in the middle in the palm of our hand is in focus in addition additionally to that uh, the yellow light is in focus and the yellow light is contrasting with the blue light so there's lots of little elements and nuances going on to really draw in the viewer's uh, attention. Moving on we have tint which is sometimes depending on your environment or the lighting uh, your subject's skin can either get like a green or a pink tint this is to counteract that. So if we go more to a green tint or a pink tint, we can see the difference that that makes. Uh, because we had all of the other settings locked in before we shot, I mean, it's always easier to get your settings right in camera so you don't have to fix them in post. It saves time and it saves energy. Uh, however, because we did it right the first time, we can actually just use these sliders instead of correction, we can use them for creation. Uh, we didn't use too much of the color mixer in this edit, however I can explain more in depth about that in a later video. Uh, but for today we're just going to move on to the effects and the difference between texture and clarity. Uh, so texture isn't as aggressive on your photo uh, for sharpening and uh, think of texture as the highlights of sharpening. It only uh, adds on me. Texture only, think of texture as the highlight of sharpening. It only takes the very tips of things and accentuates them, whereas clarity is more aggressive and it take and think of that as the exposure of sharpening uh, where too much can actually alter the uh, too much can actually alter the image itself with your exposure and saturation so for example the reason I here I have plus seven on texture is just so we can have a little more uh, detail on the little air bubbles inside the bulbs if we move that up you can see they get a bit more pronounced, however we move it down, it smooths it out. Uh, so with that I can texture relatively low. On other on other photos I these are all subject to this photo, so you can play around with them if you want. However, with clarity, uh, if you bring that down, it smooths out the whole photo. As you can see. If we bring it all the way down, we can see again, we'll zoom in on the point of focus, if we go right up, we can see the difference that that makes. However, if we're on the whole photo, see how it, accent, how it brings everything that's out of focus and tries to make it in focus? That's what clarity does. How if we bring it right back down the other side, everything that's out of focus gets a bit more blurry and that could give you more of like a daydream effect. So I, can, I keep it about halfway because we still have the texture to compensate for that. But it also smooths out and smooths out the skin and blurs out the background just a bit more, uh, as well as smoothing out the potential noise. So if we see here, the 
there's noise in the color, but then the blacks are just jet black. There's no uh, pixelated noise here. Noise is our enemy. We don't want noise. So we go up, you see these all max out clarity. You can see all of these specs uh, starting to show up. This here is noise in, in your uh, background. Now, while you can use a denoise tool, uh, it's better to try and eliminate that before you get there because it's also at the bottom. And that's the reason I like Lightroom because everything is so linear and in an orderly fashion. It makes it a lot easier to edit step by step. So we'll bring clarity back down the other way so we take away that noise. See, now it's just jet black. And then we move on to dehaze. And dehaze is just removing the atmospheric uh, whitewash noise. So it's like uh, if you were to take a photo, think of it as dehaze as trying to take a photo in the shower and the mirror is steamed up. The steam is the haze. Uh, and then what this tool does is basically wipes the mirror clean and takes that away, lets you see it more clearly. So if we move that all the way up, we can see everything becomes really tack sharp. Uh, there's no less bending of the light. And then if we move it all the way back down, we can see there's nothing but haze. So this is a really clear example of what haze is. Um, and I use this tool as well sparingly, especially uh, it's more useful here because we don't have such a well lit, uh, we're not taking like a portrait. Uh, on a portrait this would accentuate all of the imperfections on your model's face, which I'm pretty sure they want to appreciate. Finally, uh, we can move on to sharpening. And now, digital cameras as a whole tend to take quite soft images. Uh, as opposed to film cameras because of the image processing. So on every photo, I would recommend that we sharpen a little. And we can see on the sharpening tool that it has this red side, and then we have it start here. Uh, it starts at 40, uh, but then what I would do is move it up maybe halfway between the starting point and the red point. The red point will show you that it's over sharpened, and then that again can make some noise. Um, however, it's quite an old technique to try and make your images seem like they're higher resolution than they are. As well, if you were going to print this, we can see this grain here. All of these pixels here are telling are basically noise. If we bring down the sharpening, they are much less pronounced. Uh, so then that will give you a nice tap sharp image and then we result in this. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial for this brief rundown of Lightroom and camera settings and a walkthrough. Uh, if you guys would like an, a more in-depth explanation of uh, camera settings and Lightroom settings and edits, please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, and if you think someone else would enjoy this video, bring them over with a share, and if you both loved it, then subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.